In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, greetings, beloved in Christ, in the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to thank God this Monday morning as we continue sharing the Word of God on this platform. And we want to pray asking God to guide us throughout this week. And may this word help us to remain focused. Because if there is anything that is so important for us is to focus on Christ. There is so much that is happening. But those who are going to remain focusing on Christ, they will always continue to be encouraged and never to derail from the course of line. In today's text, that's Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through to 18. And here in this text, we have three similarly important themes. But our main theme is on Paul's deliberation on the issue of the law and also grace. And we have sub-themes which are the gift of grace. That is Galatians chapter 3 verses 1 to 9. Then the case of the law. That's from verse 10 through to verse 14. And lastly, we have the covenant that cannot be altered. That's verses 15 through to 18. Beloved in Christ, today we meet the Apostle Paul raising three important arguments which are very important for us. Firstly, Paul raised an argument on Galatians chapter 3 verses 1 to 9 to show that it is faith and not works of the law which puts a man right with God. In the early church, converts nearly always received the Holy Spirit in a visible way. The early chapters of the book of the Acts of the Apostles show that happening again and again. And we can read this from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 14 through to 17, and also chapter 10, verse 44. They came to them a new surge of life and power that anyone could see. That experience had happened to the Galatians, not because they had obeyed the regulations of the law, because at that time they did not, they did not hear or they had never heard of the law, because the Apostle Paul preached the gospel, the good news. The Galatians had heard the good news of the love of God and he had responded to it in an act of perfect trust. The easiest way to grasp an idea is to see it embodied in a person. In a sense, every great word must become flesh. Paul pointed the Galatians to a man who embodied faith. That is the main Abraham. Abraham was the man to whom God had made the great promise that in him all families of the earth would be blessed. Thus, Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. Abraham was the man whom God he had specially chosen as the man who pleased him. But where did Abraham specially pleased God? Abraham pleased God not by doing the works of the law. This is so because by that time, 
the law did not exist. Abraham pleased God by taking God at his word in a great act of faith. When God instructed Abraham to leave his people and go and start a new nation. And also God asked Abraham to sacrifice his only son Isaac and Abraham took God at his word. Now because of that, the promise of blessedness was made to the descendants of Abraham. On that the Jews relied on this simple physical descent from Abraham and set themselves on a different footing with God from all the other nations. Just because of this, the Jews took themselves to be only the only children of God. Now in this text, Paul declares that to be a true descendant of Abraham is not a matter of flesh and blood. The real descendant is the man who makes the same venture of faith. Therefore, it is not those who seek merit through the law who inherit the promise made to Abraham, but those of every nation who repeat Abraham's act of faith in God. It was by an act of faith that the Galatians had begun. That's why the Apostle Paul, especially in Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 to verse 5, he was even so harsh to say, you foolish Galatians, who put a spell on you, before your very eyes, you had a clear description of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Tell me this one thing. Did you receive God's spirit by doing what the law requires or by hearing the gospel and believing it? How can you be so foolish? You began by God's spirit. Do you now want to finish by your own power? Did your experience mean nothing at all? Surely it meant something. Does God give you the spirit and work miracles among you because you do what the law requires? or because you hear the gospel and you believe it. Paul was challenging the Corinthians, the, the Galatians, on what they had done. They had seen, they had believed the word of God, and they had received the blessings of God. Now they wanted, after the Judaizers had visited them, they wanted to turn into something else. Here, it was by an act of faith that the Galatians had begun. Surely, they are not going to slip back into legalism and lose their inheritance. As Paul challenged the Galatians, Paul is also challenging us. If we find ourselves entangling ourselves into these legalisms, for Christ died to liberate us from the bondage of the law. Again, in Galatians chapter 3, verses 10 to 14, we are also introduced to another argument of Paul that sought to drive his opponents into a corner from which there is no escape. Paul wrote, Suppose you decide that you are going to try to win God's approval by accepting and obeying the law. What is the inevitable consequence? Firstly, all who does that has to stand or to fall by his decision. If he chooses the law, he has got to, to live by it. Secondly, no man can ever succeed and no man ever will succeed in always keeping the law. It's not easy to keep the law. Thirdly, if that being so, one is accursed because the scripture itself says in Deuteronomy 27 verse 26, that the man who does not keep the law is under a curse. 
the inevitable end of trying to get right with God by making the law the principle of life is a curse. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, it says, It is the man who is right with God by faith who will really live. The only way to get into a right relationship with God, and therefore the only way to peace, is the way of faith. But the principle of the law and the principle of faith are antithetic. A person cannot direct his or her life by both at one and the same time. A person has to make a choice. The only logical choice is to abandon the way of legalism and to venture upon the way of faith, of taking God at his word and of trusting in his love. The only final guarantee of his truth is Jesus Christ. And to bring this truth to us, he had to die upon the cross. Deuteronomy 21 verse 23 says that every man who is hanged on a tree is accursed. To free us of the curse of the law, Jesus himself had to become a curse. And this is very important for us to understand as the children of God. As Christians, we must never forget that the peace, the liberty, the right relationship with God that we possess caused the life and the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why when we come to this, now it means some, it, it, it calls for someone to dig deep. Because we are Christians, just because Christ lost. He had to die on the cross of Calvary. And he died on our behalf. Christ had to die so as to show people the love of God. And sometimes we do not even give ourselves time to think deep into this. Sometimes it needs moments of meditation. When you realize that you are the one who is supposed to be condemned because of the sin. But now Christ said, here I am, send me. Instead of having the whole world being destroyed, I'm going to suffer for them. Now we are who we are. We are Christians. We are the children of God because of the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now sometimes we cannot focus on Christ. We cannot focus on him who lost to the point of being hanged on the tree so that me and you can be saved. Beloved in Christ, it calls for a time of introspection. We need to be so realistic, especially when it comes to this. Some of our people, some of some Christians, they need to be pushed. How do you expect someone to push you if you know that you are God's child just because Christ suffered for you? Lastly, in today's text, we have the sub-theme, the covenant that cannot be altered. We can read this from Galatians chapter 3, verses 15 to 18. The word covenant, it means an agreement between two parties. In Galatians 3, 15 to 18, the aim of Paul was to show the superiority of the way of grace over the way of the law. Paul begins by showing that the way of grace is older than the way of the law. When Abraham made his venture of faith, God made his great promise to him. God's promise was consequent upon an act of faith. The law by that time was not yet in operation because it was only during the time of Moses, that was 430 years later when God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses. 
In Galatians 3, 15 to 18, Paul argued that once a covenant or an agreement has been duly ratified, you cannot alter it, nor add additional clauses to it. The law that came 430 years later cannot alter the earlier way of faith, which, which had been ratified during the time of Abraham. It was faith which set Abraham right with God. And faith is still the only way for a man to get oneself right with God. The covenant finds its consummation in Jesus Christ. The way to peace with God is the way of faith which Abraham took. As Christians, we must repeat the same way by looking to Jesus Christ in faith. Our main issue is always to get into a right relationship with God. Being in a right relationship with God means that we will never be afraid of God because we are at peace with him. But how are we to achieve this right relationship with God? Can we achieve a right relationship with God by meticulously and even self-torturing obedience to the law or by performing endless deeds as the Judaizers would encourage and observing every smallest regulation that the law lays down. Beloved in Christ, let's get the truth straight here. If we can take this way, we will forever be in default. No man's imperfection can never fully satisfy God's perfection. If we abandon this hopeless struggle and bring ourselves and our sin to God, His grace opens its arms to us and we find ourselves at peace with God who will no longer be a judge but is going to be a father to us. According to Paul, this is what happened to Abraham. It was on that basis that God's covenant with Abraham was made and nothing that came in later can change that covenant anymore. And nothing can alter that will that had already been ratified and signed. Beloved in Christ, I know that we may be pulled in a lot of laws and a lot of arguments. What we need is the faith looking unto Christ. And this is going to help us to have a right relationship with God. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord encourage us. May the Lord help us to deepen our faith so that nothing can move us. We need our roots to go deep down so that whatever can be blown against us, we are going to remain strong. Let this word encourage us. In the name of God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.